Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Give him glory and honor. Uh, yes, we can pull some more worship here. What a blessing it's been to be with you guys. It's been a joy and it's been an honor. I've truly seen some warriors today. Warriors for the name of Jesus Christ. So I have a question for you. How many of you are on the battlefield for the Lord? Wave at me.
And I've got news to tell the folks when we go back out into the world. There are warriors in here. There are warriors in Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. How many of you were saved at a later age in life? Raise your hand. Thank you. You can put your hands down. How many of you would say if you wished you'd have got saved earlier in life? Thank you. This song talks about that. It just simply says, I wish I'd have lived. Now what you've learned, take it and apply it in your life and tell somebody else so that they won't have to go through what you went through. And this song talks about it. And I pray that you'll just tune out the world right now. And you'll tune out and let God speak to you these next few moments in this song and through the preaching of his word that's coming up. Don't worry about what's going to happen after this service. Worry about what's going on right now. And most of all, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in the best place that you could be in right now. Hear from God. And if He tells you to move, you better move. And accept Him as your Lord and Savior. It's a free gift. But He paid the ultimate price on the cross for you. Listen to this song that says, I wish I'd have lived.
Those of you who studied the Bible will know that's the only thing the disciples ever asked Jesus. Because he knew that the power source in life was through prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Then he goes on to tell a story there, a parable. But then I want to come down to verse 9. Verse 9, he says this. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus said there's power in being persistent. There's power in asking, seeking, and knocking. Someone has said, seeking is intensified. Asking and, and uh, pardon me, seeking is intensified. Asking and knocking is intensified seeking. So he's saying, be passionate when you pray. And then he goes on to say in verse 11, which of you fathers, if you have a son, ask for a fish, Will you give him a snake and stick? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know to give good gifts to your children. You know, uh, I know that word father can be a tough word. It can be a tough word. My dad died when I was 18 years old. He had multiple sclerosis. For about five years before that, I saw him take his last breath. My uncle, who had become a dad to me, lived about two, ho two doors down. Six months before my dad died, he fell over on the garage floor with a heart attack. I've longed for a father figure in my life. If I could read your mail, I would believe that everyone in this room would say, boy, I wish I had a dad that would have built into my life. I might not be where I am today if I had a dad that would have taught me. It's a hard thing. It's hard to live without a dad. I'm so grateful that somehow from the Word of God, God said to me, I'll be your father. And I want you to hear me today. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how hurt you've been, or even angry. When we get hurt, we get angry. There is a father in heaven who really loves you and wants to father you. He's given you a manual that tells you how much he loves you, even though it's been tough. And he wants to follow you. But it's interesting. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ said, you fathers that are evil, I have four daughters. But Jesus is saying that all of us, Pastor Rod, David, all of us, basically are fallen. We have an evil heart. In fact, the Bible says the heart's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. All of us are that way. We're born that way. Only Jesus can really change our hearts. No matter how much you try, no matter how many times you try to reform, only Jesus can change your heart. He is saying, you guys are dads and you're basically evil, but still you wouldn't do awful things to your children. I have four daughters and ten grandchildren, and I tell you, even though I'm selfish at times, I would do anything and nothing to hurt them. It's interesting. He said, if, if you as a father are like that, by the way, how many of you have ever done something in your life and you wish you hadn't when you see it? My hands up. Look at me. Look at me. By the grace of God, I'm a preacher. But in my heart, I have failed and failed and failed like every one of you. I'm no different than anyone. I need 
need a Savior to help. I need a Father to guide. And he said, If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, what are the next three words? How much more? Would you say that with me? How much more will your Father in heaven give the what? To those who seek him or ask him. Hear me. Isn't that an unusual term of him? He said, you give good things to your children. How much more will the Father in heaven, my heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He is saying what Jesus is saying here. Catch it. Here's what he's saying. That the greatest need of every life is the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have the power of God in you. And you have the Father of God in you. The Father is in you. Jesus is in you. The Spirit is in you. And He will guide you. He will father you. He will direct you. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will lead you in the paths of righteousness. Father, He said, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Here's what 1 John 1.12 says. As many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the children of God, even to those that believe on his name. And so here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying that when you receive Christ into your life, you receive the Holy Spirit in your life, and you have power. So much of our lives are looking for power. We're looking through power through money. We look through power through strength, brute strength. We look through power through influence or position, popularity, political power. But yet, that kind of power fades. Jesus said, here's the kind of power that will get you through life, and that is the one and only Holy Spirit. As he will come and indwell your life. He'll give you the power. That's why the Bible says in Acts 1.8, you shall receive what? Power. power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Power. He gives us power. The power to live life from within. John if you have your Bibles, please, turn to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 23. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, Jesus said. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of the wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Here's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. If you're listening to me, would you say, yes? If you're listening to me, would you say, yes? yes. Okay, here's what Jesus is saying. You've got to take a corn of wheat, it's like a corn of wheat, you put it in the ground and it dies. But when it dies, it produces a great crop. He said, that's the way your life is. If you will die to your selfishness, if you'll die to your way, if you'll die and surrender as we were heard and sing a moment ago, if you'll die to self, even here, if you'll die to self, I'll raise you up and make you more powerful and alive than you've ever been before in your life. That's what will happen. That's what the Spirit of God does. You die to your flesh and the Spirit comes and lives in you. Well, I've been driving around here, Linda and I, and the chaplain, and looking at all these fields. It's amazing. How many of y'all are growing this stuff, or out there planting this stuff? Some of you? Are you out there helping? Man. Woo, it's amazing what's out there. I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. 
And, uh, but when I started preaching, I moved to Fort Worth, Texas. And the first place I preached in, Fort Worth, in Texas was a place called Jacksboro, Texas. Have you ever been to Jacksboro, Texas? You have? Jacksboro, okay. Well, I went to Jacksboro and preached at First Baptist Church. After I preached, Joshua, they took, some people took me home to their home to, for dinner. And you know what they fed the preacher? They had corn, cabbage, and guess what? They had fried what? Chicken. The gospel bird. Amen? And so, oh yeah, they had fried chicken, nice taters, and gravy, and green beans, and corn, and all that stuff. But then they just said they wanted to serve me something else, and they were these little brown stuff covered with uh, dough. And I said, what in the world is that? And they said, that's fried okra. I said, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. You have to understand, this was about 40 years ago when I first started preaching. In Kansas City, all I knew about okra is we fed it to the pigs. Yeah. And I thought, man, they must not like my message. And so, but they said, you try it and you'll like it. And I ate some okra. Woo! That was good. I won some more okra. So everywhere I went in Texas, I said, do you have any okra? I think they called it okra, but okra. And we, and so I ate that fried okra, and then I discovered that you could eat okra stewed and boiled, and when you ate it stewed and boiled, you didn't have to chew it or swallow it. It just slid right on down. <laughs> I mean, just, and so we had just eaten okra, and my first church out of seminary, I went to a place called Hera, Oklahoma. Hera, Oklahoma, First Baptist Church. And they, the deacons there said, we want you to have a garden. And I said, okay. And so they brought over a rototiller, and I rototilled the backyard up, and man, it just pulled me all over the place. And they said, what do you want to raise? And I said, I want to raise okra. <laughs> and they said, okay, we'll bring you some okra seeds. And I said, don't forget, I want that green slimy stuff. <laughs> and they brought me over some seeds. And I said, I know you're the deacons, and you wouldn't lie to me, but these are dry, and they're wrinkled, and they look dead. He said, uh, trust us. Yes, yes. Put those in the ground, and they'll turn into green slimy oak. I said, you're the deacons. I think I don't think you'd lie to me, but man, that's hard to believe. I didn't know anything about farming, so I planted just row after 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 row of oak. And they said, uh, I said, I don't think it's going to grow. And they said, it will. And all of a sudden, there's some green shoots coming out of the ground. I said, Linda, my okra's a lot. And it was coming everywhere. And one day I walk, woke up, and I'm telling you, there were okra pods everywhere. And I got my knife out, and I cut those okra pods, and we brought them in, and we chopped them up, and we battered them, and we fried them, and we had dinner. And I said, Linda! I'm so proud of myself. What a wonderful okra crop we had this year. I can't wait till next year. I'm going to plant them again and have another okra crop. That shows you how naive I was. I went to bed, woke up the next morning, walked out in the backyard. They were back. <laughs> they came back. And I went out there, I took a knife, and I chopped them up again. We batted them, and I said, Woo, what a wonderful okra crop. Two days, okra crop. Came back the next day. They were back. I cut them and I chopped them and we fried them and I cut them and I chopped them and we battered them and we and we boiled them and we stewed them and we gave them to the neighbors and gave them to the deacons and finally I said, how do you kill the okra? They said, don't worry about it. The freeze will get it. I said, hurry up, freeze. <laughs> so the freeze came, and, and man, I was so frustrated. I got that, chopped all that down, got that rototiller back up, and rototilled it back up, and got it all rototiller up. <laughs> Deacons came over and said, what'd you do about that over? I said, I got rid of it. I rototilled it all up. They said, dummy, <laughs> you think you had over this year, you wait till next year. <laughs> I thought 
God so much. And God could take an ocracy, a dead, dry ocracy, and you put it in the ground and it dies. But when it dies, it grows, produces thousands.
to fix me, to change me, to fill me, to use me. He said, if you've got me, I can do it. If you come to Angola and you still think you can fix yourself, you still think you can scheme, you still, still think you can trick, then go ahead. Because I'm not anywhere around you, God says. But if you've got to the point that you're desperate for God, He's ready to fix you, to use you, and to multiply you with His power if you'll persistently seek Him. Dan and Charmaine Brown were in our church in Oklahoma City. Well, they came to Christ in Oklahoma City. They repented of their sins and asked Christ to come to their life. They had a, Charmaine had a mom whose name was Dolores Hepp. And Dolores gave her life to Christ. And I said, Dolores, you want to be baptized. And by the way, you guys that were saved last night, someone's going to be talking to you and wanting you to be baptized. That's so important that you follow the Lord in baptism. But Dolores Hepp said, I don't want to be baptized yet because my husband, Bob, is not a Christian. And she said, I'm believing and I'm going to keep crying out to God until he's saved. Before I'm baptized. And I said, okay, Dolores, tell me about Bob. She said, he's a very angry man. He's a very wealthy man, but he's angry inside. I find out a lot of men are angry. We're frustrated about our lives. Bob was very angry. She said something else. She said, he doesn't like Baptists. I said, that's not good. And she said, besides that, he hates Baptist preachers. I said, ooh, that's real bad. I think if she's going to ask me to go see him, she didn't. She said, will you pray for him? I said, sure. After about six months, she came to my office. She said, Pastor Rod, I wanted to came to ask you something. Would you pray with me whatever it takes for my husband to be saved? Because that would be happy. That would happen. I said, Dolores, I really don't want to pray that. She said, please, Pastor Rod. Heaven wouldn't be heaven. I know Christ is in my heart, and I've committed my life to Christ, and the Spirit of God indwells me. But heaven wouldn't be heaven if Bob wasn't there. I said, the Lord, that's a very dangerous prayer. She said, I don't care what it costs. I want Bob to be saved and baptized with me. I'm going to pray day and night with you. I said, I will. She said, would you pray whatever it takes? I said, I will. About nine months later, I got a phone call, and Dolores said, I'm in the hospital. Would you come see me? I went in to see her. There was a man there I'd never met. He stuck out his hand. He said, my name's Bob Pepp. My wife has cancer. And they said, she's not going to make it. Would you pray for my wife? I said, I sure will, Bob. So I prayed for her and started to leave. He said, my wife told me you've been praying for me. I said, I have, Bob. But more importantly, your wife's been praying for you every day. He said, can I come see you? I said, sure. So about a week later, Bob came to my office. He sat down and he said, Pastor, I'm an angry, frustrated hurting man. And now my wife has cancer. And I know she's been praying for me. How can I get my life right with God? And I say, hey, Bob, you realize you're a sinner? He said, I sure do. I said, Bob, the Bible says you have to repent. And I heard that man say, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what I've done and how I've lived. And I beg you to forgive me. And then I heard him pray, Lord Jesus, come live in my heart. The Spirit of God, come and dwell within me. I receive you into my life. Give me the power to be what you had me to be. Bob stood up. He was on his knees. He stood up and he said, Pastor, I've made my life right with God. I don't care what happens. I'm going to live for him. A week 
or so later, Bob came into the baptistry and they got her, Dolores Hepp, up the stairs from her wheelchair and a walker and got her into the baptistry. She held up her hand. She said to the congregation, Prayer answering God. God's a prayer answering God. God's a prayer answering God. My husband's saved and going to heaven. And I'm going to. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want your relationship with Christ to be right now? I retired from pastoring. November the 6th, I think it was, that was that Sunday. My mom's 90 years old, and they surprised me. My mom came. She could barely get there. She came, and I hugged her. When I was hugging my mom, I looked over my shoulder. I looked over her shoulder, and there coming in that door was a man that looked so familiar. And as he walked closer, I saw it was Bob Hey, from Oklahoma City. Bob came and embraced me. He said, Rod, thanks for praying for me with Doris. One day I'm going to be with her in heaven. Amen. There's some loved ones praying for you. And I just wonder, would you determine in your life to say, I'm tired of trying to fix it. I'm tired of trying to fix myself. I'm going to get persistent in prayer. I'm going to surrender my life to Christ. I'm desperate. Whatever it takes. I'm going to get right with God and let him use it. The first word is power. The second word is what? <laughs> Would you get persistent in prayer? And finally, the final word, look at it. Verse 8, I mean, chapter 18, look at it, what Jesus said. Verse 8, he said, I tell you, he will see that they get justice in quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Isn't that an interesting statement? Guys, are you listening? What a statement. He's talking about prayer. Then all of a sudden he says, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find what on the earth? Faith. Let's say it out loud. Faith. Will he find faith on the earth? That's weird. He's talking about prayer. And then all of a sudden, will he find faith on the earth? What does he mean, will he find faith on the earth? Here's what faith is. I'm going to tell you quickly. Listen quickly. Faith is, here's what Manly Beasley, any of you ever heard of Manly Beasley? Any of you? Manly Beasley used to say this. Faith is believing something that is not so, is so, because God said it was so, so God could make it so. Repeat that back to me, would you? Here it is. Faith is believing something that is not so, is so, because God's word said it was so, and he'll make it so. In other words, Manly Beasley says, the faith is believing the word of God regardless of what you feel, think, or what's going on in your life. Believing the word of God over anything else. That's a Bible worldview. And I'm saying that's the only hope our nation has. That's the only hope you have. Is to take God's word and believe it and live it out. That's what faith is. And Jesus said... God will answer the prayers of those who cry out to him day and night who are that desperate. And he says, I wonder when I return. And by the way, Jesus is coming back. How many wanted to come back today? I do. I do. I'm ready. Wouldn't it be great for all of us to go up together? If you have Jesus in your heart, you'll go to be with him. When the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith on the earth? Will he say, yes. Those men believe the word of God. And they're living according to the word of God. And they have power in their life and persistence in their life. They're determined to live out the word of God. And I'll bless their lives. That's believing God. God wants me to believe him. Say that with me. God wants me to believe him. God wants me to believe him. One quick verse, and then we're going to close. Look, in Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Stay with me. How many of y'all normally take a nap on Saturday afternoon? Let me see your hand. Don't do it now, all right? 
You're going to miss God. Here it is. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as he had been said to him. Just as what? God said it to him. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. That his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And Sarah's womb was also dead. Are you all listening? Here's what God said to Abraham. Abraham, you're a hundred years old. And you're going to have a son. And he's going to bless the world. In fact, Jesus is going to come through him. And Abraham, 100 years old, and Sarah, 90 years old. Woo! I'm 66 years old, and my wife looks like she's 39, but she's 63. And I tell you what, if I go home today and I say, Linda, we're going to move close to the elementary school because I got a feeling we're going to have another child. She'd do exactly what you're doing. She'd laugh, and then she'd cry. How many of you here are 66 or older? Let me see your hand. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. You're 97. Well, I think I'll just let that go. All right. Here's what I want you to understand. Abraham knew he couldn't do it. Abraham knew Sarah couldn't do it. But God said it's going to happen. So here's what the Bible says. He faced the fact. And then yet, verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. But was strengthened in his faith. In his what? Faith. Say that word loud. Faith. And gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to what? Perform. This is why it is credited to him as righteous. God wants me to believe him. Would you say that? God wants me to believe him. Here's what Jesus said. As many as received him. To them gave me the power to become the children of God. That's what God says. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then you can receive Christ into your life and he'll give you power. Jesus said, if you cry out to me day and night, I'll answer your prayers. When you decide you don't have any other options, I'll answer your prayers. Y'all believe that? Y'all believe that? That's persistence. And then it's faith, believing the word of God. This is God's word. And he says this. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God says this. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have the petitions that we've asked. He answers is our prayers if we pray according to his word. Okay. Guys, I'm so thankful God's allowed me to meet you. And I want you to know God wants you to live a vibrant life. And there's three words that will help you live the life. The first one is what? Oh. The second one is what? Faith. The third one is what? Faith. You'll live by power, persistence, and faith. Believing the word of God, you'll transform you. God the Father loves you. God the Father loves you. Would you say that? God the Father loves you. No matter what kind of experience you've had with God, God the Father loves you. There's a story, and I in Luke chapter 15, there was a boy like you 
for a boy like me. Daddy, dad. He said to his dad, I'm tired of being home. I want to go do my own thing. How many of you ever done that? He said, I'm going to do my own thing. And so he went out and he got his money and he went out and he did his own thing. He wasted it all, the Bible says. Then what happened? Where did he find himself? He found himself with the pigs, with the hogs. And he was eating what was off their table, just what was in the, the mire. And then he said to himself, my father, hired servants, have more than I have. I'm just going to go back to my father and ask him if I could just be a servant. Not a son, but a servant. I sure messed up. Then he decided. But you know, on the other end, the father was standing every day. He'd go out and he'd look for his son. I believe there's a heavenly father that visits that every day here in Angola. He looks for a son. He looked. He's standing and looking. And all of a sudden, the son started getting home. And as he was coming home, his father saw him. And their eyes met. And the son ran and ran and ran and ran to his father and fell. He said, Dad, I repent. I am so sorry. I just want to be a servant. You know what his dad did? His dad lifted him up. And he said, you're not a servant. You're my son. I've been looking for you. You've been gone. You went away. But you've come home. Hey, guys. Let's have a party. This is my son was lost. And he's found. He was dead. But now he's alive. Let's have a party. My son, my son is home. I just want you to know, guys, that's the word of God. And if you'll believe it, if you'll believe it, the Father is standing right here at the altar. And he's saying, welcome home, son. Welcome home. Welcome home. I'll give you the power to live the life you need to live. If you'll be determined to seek me, and you'll live by my word and obey me, I'll give you meaning and purpose in life. We'll eat. We'll fellowship together. And I'll make your life mean. Very reverently, very quietly. Would you stand for a moment? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Some of you today, you tried everything you know to fix your life. Except genuinely, sincerely die to self and turn your life to Christ. But today, you know the Father is speaking to you. And the Spirit of God wants to come live inside of you. But you have to ask. You have to want. And you can do that by prayer. So right now, if you really want Christ to come into your life, I want you to pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it out loud. And if you're sincere in it, Christ, by His Spirit, will come live within you and give you power and give you a drive to be persistent and to walk by faith. You pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I realize I'm a sinner. And I repent. I'm turning around and turning to you. Father, I'm coming home. Thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for looking for me. Lord Jesus, come live in my heart. 
take over my life. Give me the power to live, Lord. And in these days I have left on this earth to make a difference for your kingdom. And I pray in Jesus. While our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you pray that prayer within your heart and you really, really meant it. No one else is looking around. But if you pray that prayer in your heart and you really meant it, I want you just to hold up your hand high all over this room. I prayed that my that prayer and I really meant it. Hold it up high all over this room. I prayed that prayer and I really meant it. I'm serious. I prayed it and I meant it. Hold it up high. Keep them up. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that these men who said they prayed that prayer, you know their hearts. You know. And Lord, I pray that you will see by your spirit their commitment to you. And Lord, that they would be determined to be persistent in following you and walking by faith according to the word of God. In Jesus' name. Hands down, please. Every person that Christ called, he called publicly. Here's the picture I want you to see in your mind today. There's a heavenly father who's touched your heart today. And he's standing here with me. And I want you to come to him. I want you to run to him. Every person Christ called, he called publicly. And he said this, if you mean business for me, you'll take your stand. So if you really meant that, here's what I'm asking you to do. To come right now and stand right in front of you. This is the first one. Any of you, step out and come stand right in front of me. And say, I meant that prayer. I'm not playing games with God. I know he sees my heart. I'm taking my stand for him. It's from the back, everywhere we are. Just step out and come. Running to God. The Father is waiting for you with open arms. There are many coming. You just step out and come. Don't come because of someone else, but you come because God has spoken to you. He's coming home to you. He's coming. I'm coming home to you, Father. I'm coming home to you. You just step out and come. I'm coming home to you. We're going to sing for a moment. Others of you just live out and come. You just join these. They're coming, saying, I've committed my life to Christ. I admit that prayer. I took my stand for Christ. You slip out and come. Ministers, you come stand with them. Men who come to help you come stand with them. I prayed that prayer and I'm in it. Slip out and come. Slip out and come. I prayed that prayer and I'm in it. Slip out and come. We're singing. You come right now. Amen.
give this information to these guys. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would seal in these hearts these decisions. And Father, now help them to grow into your likeness. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a hand, all right?
through. Thank you for watching, and we hope that uh, you have received a blessing from the services. And I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. If, if during the service, did the 
Holy Spirit begin to knock on your heart's door. Just saying that you felt like something just wasn't right in your relationship with the Lord and you'd like to get that right. I want you to stop and think, where will you spend eternity? There's only two choices, heaven or hell. You can make heaven your home right now. Right where you're at at this very moment. You can pray and ask the Lord to come into your life. The Bible says that all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. God made a way by Jesus Christ giving himself on the cross for you. And it's simply asking him into your heart to forgive you of your sin and to save you. That's what he can do. So I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer. I can't save you, but I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer of faith. You pray, believing, and asking the Lord to come into your life to save you and forgive you of your sins. Recognizing that He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that He died and rose again, my Bible says that you will be saved. So why don't you pray with us? You have heaven comes. Know that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I believe You died and You rose again. That You're in heaven right now. Lord Jesus, would you come into my heart and forgive me of my sin? Lord Jesus, save me. I don't want to die and go to hell. Lord, thank you for saving my soul. I want to live the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer, we'd like you to accept the Lord as your Savior. And you can simply shoot us an email thecrusadersministries.com go to our website shoot us an email we'd love to hear from you you can find us on Facebook The Crusaders Ministries or we'd be glad to hear from you call 870-904-3118 we'd like to rejoice with you and celebrate maybe get you hooked up with a church in your area that can teach you and grow you but if you prayed this prayer of faith and asked the Lord to save you, I want to tell you, you just made the greatest decision in your life by asking the Lord to save you. Once again, thank you so very much for watching the video. And I want to tell you, the Crusaders is a non-profit organization. We travel full-time in ministry all across the United States, presenting the gospel in prisons, in homeless shelters, in churches, and other concert venues. We would desire your support. We desire your prayers, first of all. But it takes money to go across this nation. Fuel being $4 a gallon plus. And the offerings go to get us to the next place. To preach the gospel, to present the gospel through song. So I ask you, prayerfully consider supporting the ministry of the Crusaders. And you can contact us again at thecrusadersministries.com. And there's uh, all sorts of information about supporting us. We pray that you'll pray about this. Or if you have further questions, feel free to call me. We'd be glad to speak with you concerning any issues you may have in your life. Or if you have questions about the ministry and what we're doing. Once again, that number that can be reached at is 870-904-3118. And once again, we thank you so very much for your support already and what you're going to do and us going out and presenting the gospel and seeing more than we've seen except Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We're praying for thousands this year. We pray you pray with us and you'll support us as we go across presenting the gospel. Once again, thank you. God bless you.